Okay, thanks very much. So uh, I wanted to uh, consider this somewhat of a discussion. Uh, th there's some very specific functional aspects to it, uh, which may require a deep dive with a functional SME uh, later on. But I wanted to get in and, and talk about just the generalities of data archiving and the, uh, the reasons why you might get into it. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about anything future, but this is our typical uh, uh, safe harbor statement. So just in general, uh, a lot of people are familiar with archiving, but I just wanted to go back over the uh, the background, what is archiving and purge, uh, talk about the value proposition, talk a little bit about developing an archiving set strategy, uh, some of the products that are available, because there are other products besides uh, uh, the PeopleSoft Data Archiving Manager, and then uh, get a little bit more into the bones of the PeopleSoft Data Archiving Manager and talk about some non-purge use that uh, I've come across recently as a, an additional value for, uh, for data archiving. So essentially data archiving is moving rarely or little used data uh, to offline storage. So we're, what we're doing is looking at continually reducing uh, the size of the active or production database that we're managing. And typically then on a uh, periodic basis, the data to be archived. Uh, with PeopleSoft, it's it's we create a batch, and then that batch is moved through uh, uh, through batch process or through a through a scheduled job into history tables. And I wanted to emphasize what move means here, uh, from the point of view of um, of data archiving. Uh, we have a set of history tables set up, which are effectively uh, mirrors of the uh, of the actual. Um, the production tables uh, with some additional indexes. So when we move the data in there, we're moving it, moving the data out of the uh, online uh, and available tables into the history tables. So that means that the typically that the uh, that the transactions and the components that uh, the users are using won't have direct access to the uh, to that data, uh, uh, although the data can be reported on. And then at some stage uh, subsequently to that, based on the internal uh, uh, compliance with data retention, uh, those history tables would be moved into an offline instance. And moving the tab those history tables into an offline instance means that the tables are the history tables themselves are removed or truncated in the database. So we're actually reducing the size of the database. And then those history tables uh, uh, will typically either be deleted or the contents will be deleted. And the overall uh, result then is that we're maintaining the uh, the database. I'm getting a lot of uh, noise there. So the database itself is used, and and what does the the uh, yeah? I'd okay, okay. Thanks a lot, Madhu. So the overall value uh, proposition is to increase the uh, uh, the efficiency. Of the, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a, we're getting a lot of background noise there. Okay, if I mute myself, I can still hear the noise, so. Okay, thanks a lot, my dude. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So how are we re where are we increasing this efficient use and, and how are we increasing the management of the database? First of all, we're reducing the size. So the replication, uh, our cloning of, of the database then becomes uh, much more efficient. Uh, I was speaking to one customer yesterday uh, who hadn't uh, implemented any form of uh, data archiving. And they had three databases. The, uh, one of them was nearly a terabyte and the other two were one and a half terabytes. 
So it's it struck me. It's like the uh, watching those guys with their uh, shopping carts full of uh, um, all sorts of detritus. Uh, you know, you're hauling around all this baggage from uh, from release to release and through all the upgrades. Uh, the other thing is the uh, PeopleSoft does a lot of full table scans in the uh, in the batch process. So if you're doing a full table scan. Uh, the, just the time to do that, to trawl through the tables, is very significant. Now, the uh, the other area is uh, um, working with the compliance, the, your internal compliance people on multiple retention requirements. So, uh, you may have the need to have, uh, just for efficiency's sake, maintain, uh, say, three years of online data. But for data retention, you may need to have up to seven or, or nine years of online data. Uh, so that that would typically be the data that you would uh, the, between the three and the or between the uh, that three to five year period and the seven to nine year period you would move those uh, that data into the uh, into the history tables, uh, which means they're still available then for uh, e-discovery and audit, uh, but they're not impacting the performance of the uh, of the online system. By moving, uh, I mean it's it's a small sort of peripheral benefit, though, but by moving the uh, the data into offline storage and then subsequently probably into uh, uh, secured storage, you're increasing the security of the of that data. Uh, and then, as I said, just generally uh, backing up uh, um, backing up a, a full like one and a half terabyte data to uh, uh, to some form of backup media is resource intensive so reducing the size of the database uh, significantly increases the uh, the efficiency and the resource management there so in terms of uh, developing an archiving strategy this is not a case of just switching on uh, uh, the feature and, and then letting it go you you need to work with the legal and compliance uh, departments in your organization you probably also need to work with the hr uh, and not from uh, not from an application perspective, just HR in terms of uh, what data is being managed and and where it's being uh, transferred to, and then who has access to that retained data uh, once you've once you've moved it off the uh, the offline or the online system because your um, roles and permissions are going to change uh, in terms of access to those uh, tables because they're not part of the uh, of the application. So the the next thing is is to work with the development teams. To your development teams may require or may have different requirements to uh, production in terms of the data that's available online. Uh, if that's the case, then that may affect the how the uh, how the archiving strategy changes. In also in implementing the data archiving strategy, now that the uh, the data is not online, it, uh, or you're moving it to uh, to offline storage, so that may change the way that the uh, the IT department manage the uh, storage within the storage arrays. Uh, is everything going to be on expensive storage? Are you going to be able to implement uh, less expensive storage for the uh, for the archive data and, and consequently reduce the uh, the costs? Just it's purely in in the data arrays. And then deciding on a purge schedule. So there, there are tables that just continue to grow for no particular reason. So like transaction tables or the uh, staging tables. Uh, that can be included as part of a purge schedule when you implement the, the, the data archiving uh, strategy. So I just have a paragraph there that comes from uh, one of the PeopleSoft ta uh, uh, pages. And it's just useful to uh, recognize that there are uh, uh, things that you need to consider before you implement this, this strategy, the uh, data archiving. And I've got, uh, throughout this, uh, this document, I've got a bunch of links that uh, will be available on the, on the PDF. So typically here, uh, I mean, this is a very simplistic overview, but uh, we start off with a database which grows over time and then we implement the select an archive, and what the uh, what the archiving is doing is moving or the data from the the extended uh, 
production database into the history tables. And then subsequently those history tables are moved offline into separate storage. And then the delete and the purge then uh, reduces the size of the database back to uh, something similar to what it was originally. So then we, the, typically, the typical cycle is that the output from the, uh, the, the purge and delete uh, becomes the new uh, uh, production database. I have here this mask and, and the identifier. In terms of creating uh, dev environments, uh, masking or the identifying, whether you do it through a series of scripts that you've developed internally or you're using a product like the, uh, the Oracle uh, data masking product, uh, which effectively de-identifies the data for development so that the developers are not accessing live data when, when, they're, when they're working on, the, uh, uh, on new products. But this whole process itself, the masking and identifying, if you've been able to reduce the size of the database, this also then becomes uh, significantly more efficient in terms of the, uh, uh, the speed and the resources required to, uh, to maintain dev environments. In terms of the uh, the products that are available, obviously we have uh, the PeopleSoft Data Archiving Man Manager, and this comes at zero license cost. So it, it's sitting there in people tools, uh, just waiting to be used. Uh, and uh, there are some other products. Uh, the IBM Optum product, which is probably one of the more uh, uh, comprehensive products, this came from the Princeton SoftTech uh, acquisition by IBM. And Prince, Prince and Softech, when they were developing the product originally, used Beacon Services. Beacon Services, if you're not familiar with them, have a number of uh, PeopleSoft-related products, but they have fairly deep knowledge of, uh, uh, of table structures uh, within PeopleSoft as well. So they're, um, they made a very significant contribution to, to that product. There's another product called Solix. Uh, Solix haven't uh, validated their product with PeopleSoft since 9.1, but they... Uh, uh, they're uh, out there as uh, promoting uh, the use of Solix with, uh, with PeopleSoft. And then a lot of companies have done some in-house uh, stuff as well, basically using SQL, SQR, uh, application engines, and uh, even PL SQL in, in terms of the uh, uh, companies who are using uh, the Oracle database. <coughs> PeopleSoft Data Archiving Manager, just to move into that, it's, it's a fully supported product. Uh, we take service calls if there are issues. And the applications teams deliver and maintain the templates. So the, there are uh, a number of templates and uh, the, a number of history tables already delivered with the, uh, with the applications. And then just to walk through, the Data Archiving Manager uh, has a number of elements, the, and I'm not going to read out the list, but the, the, these are part of the maintained uh, uh, objects that PeopleSoft delivered. The restore definition, I would, I'd like to highlight that because obviously uh, you can set up data archiving and continue data archiving for years, and then at some point you need to roll them back or... Uh, do a review of what's been stored in history. And then you find out that the, uh, the data is corrupt or you haven't been uh, uh, archiving all the tables required. So occasionally, uh, just from a trust but verify uh, perspective, you'll need to do some uh, rollback testing to make sure that you're, the, the data that you're capturing is, uh, 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 is has uh, internal sort of uh, uh, integrity w within it that you're not missing out tables uh, when you go and try and uh, review the, the information that you've, uh, uh, that you've been archiving. Most unfortunate to find the stuff that you're um, archiving has, has, uh, uh, is <laughs> has no real value. And if you've listened to any of my uh, security presentations, you know that I'm a big fan of auditing and uh, the Data Archiving Manager has uh, uh, auditing support within it. Uh, this link here will take you to all of the objects that are captured as part of that, uh, as part of that archive. And then some considerations when, uh, 
when you're implementing uh, data archiving. The, obviously, the, um, uh, in terms of just performance of the archive itself, uh, that's a, a significant uh, recommendation there. The other thing is the, uh, the indexes. Different databases have uh, uh, different index considerations, which you may need to consider because th this PeopleSoft, uh, uh, the Data Archive Manager, obviously works across all of the supported uh, database that PeopleSoft supports. And it needs uh, uh, unique index as well. And then the last part there is the, the data limitations in terms of the, uh, the objects that, are, um, that can be archived uh, in terms of the, uh, or it, it's, this is primarily for the Oracle DB. Uh, if, you, if you've got records with long image or attachments in it, uh, you need to do a data type switch before archiving. And then this is just a notional uh, uh, overview of, of the templates that are delivered with, uh, with PeopleSoft. This is for, uh, obviously for HCM, where we delivered a significant number of, uh, of templates, and FSCM as well. The, um, the link here will uh, just runs a search on the available templates in, uh, uh, from PeopleBooks. So it's useful to uh, useful to have a look at that. And then, in terms of just a uh, a non purge use of uh, of data archiving, one of the use cases, uh, and it comes up on a on a fairly regular basis, particularly as um, uh, um, more companies are running. Uh, full audits, uh, and, and I don't mean in a, a database audit, but uh, an audit with, uh, as part of the year-end process, where an auditor might suggest that certain users uh, shouldn't have the access that they have and then need to have that verified subsequently. By running uh, data archiving against the, uh, the user profile tables, and that includes the permissions and, and roles, uh, it becomes fairly easy to respond to, to two types of auditing questions. One is, uh, which users have particular roles in the organization? And then secondly, uh, to confirm that you've complied with auditor recommendations in terms of removing uh, permissions or doing attestation uh, with the users uh, in the organization as to their, uh, the capabilities and that that they have uh, within the application. So that was a fairly short overview. As I said, if um, if you think that it's useful doing it.